11.3 probability distributions. So probability distributions just shows you all the possible outcomes of the thing you're talking about. So like in here they give two examples. If you roll two dice, right, what are the outcomes? We well, could get two, any number between two and twelve, where seven being the most the most likely, and then two and twelve being the least likely. Over here is miles per gallon. So they took like a survey of cars and they got wow. On average, most cars got 24, some of them got 18, some of them got even less than that, some of them got 30, and some of them got even more than that. Now, if you notice, though, these are very different. This is a strict amount. It could be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right? You can't get, we can't roll two dice and get 3.5, for instance. You can't get 8.1. It doesn't work that way. Miles per gallon, you can, though. You could get every number in between. You could get 21, you could get 22, you could get 19.1, you could get any value in between. We have names for these two. Um, the one right here where it has to be certain values that fit in between, we call this discrete. Easy way to think about it is this is the ones you could count. You can count the number, you can count the values on the die and all that stuff. Right here we call this continuous. This one we talk it's like a measurement. Continuous about data is anytime it falls in between. So like miles per gallon, does it have to be 1821? A uh, good way to think about this is the size of your feet. Right? It could be anywhere. Like it might be a foot, it might be eight eight point five inches, it might be nine point three inches. But discrete would be shoe sizes. Right? Shoe sizes come in seven, seven and a half, eight. You can't get seven point seven five or seven point eight one shoe sizes. Yeah, that has to be one of those values. So that's a discrete data where the actual measurement of your foot is this one. It's continuous. So first thing we're gonna do, let's go identify it. The number of songs found on a random selection of MV, MP3 players. Uh, let's say phones, because you know it's 2000 whatever. Um, so this one, could you count this? Always one thing, could you count the number of songs in your phone? Is your, is your phone gonna have 31.45 songs? Like no, it's gonna be countable. It's gonna be 30 or 40 or 500, whatever you have. So this is discrete. You could count them. You're not going to get half a song. Let's see some more examples. Same idea. The number of page links to a web page, that's also discrete. The number of stations on a cable package. So like if you get channels, right? You're not going to get half a channel. You're going to get you're going to get a countable amount. So that's discrete also. The amount of precipitation in the city. So how much does it rain in the city? That is continuous, right? You're not going to go, the rain of stays not going to be two inches and then jump up three inches with no in between. There's in between, that could be anything. So this is continuous. It could fall anywhere in between. The number of cars passing through an intersection at a given time interval, that's all about kind of your reference. Are we talking about, are we counting like the full car? Are we counting the partial cars? So I'm going to go either way. This one's actually kind of ambiguous. I'm going to let that one go. Because if you're talking about you're just counting full cars through, that'd be discrete. But if you're counting like half a car, because in, in that snapshot you took, and like in that time, time given interval, then well, I'll say it's continuous. So it all kind of depends on what we're talking about. So let's talk about probability distribution. So this is actually the way we list out our probabilities. So a couple of key things here. Um, probability in general, we talked about before. The max you could do is a one, right? The max probability. is 100% or 1 and the least probability is 0. Another big idea here is this. The sum of all your probabilities should equal 1. So think about fl flipping a coin, right? So you have heads and tails, odds against heads 1 half, odds against tails 1 half. If you add them up, you get 2 over 2 or 1. Anytime you have probabilities, when you add them up, you should always get 1. Very, very big idea. The last thing was something we talked about before. There's two types of probabilities, theoretical, that's just based on the mathematics, and experimental, that's based on experiments. You do an experiment, you take the findings, blah, blah, blah. So like real quickly right here, let's do an experimental one. So what happened here is they dropped a batch of, of paper clips onto, the, onto a piece of paper. And some of them fell inside the paper, some fell on the paper. And based on this thing here, there's 145 paper clips in total. So my total was 145. And then they said 113 felt completely inside. I call BS. And 32, only 32 fell on the line. That seems off. Anyway, they want to know based on this experiment, what's the probability of getting a paper that falls inside a square? Well, you can put 1 over total. 
I'm going to do 113 over 145. Following the line, 32 over 145, right? That's one over total. Based on the experiment, there you go. Example right here. Jose surveyed the length of TV commercials in seconds. Find three decimal places of the experiment probably that randomly chosen TV commercial last between 20 and 30 seconds. So first thing I do here, if we can do that, I want one over total, right? I don't have a total right now, so I gotta add all these up. So you got 17, 38, 19, and 4. And you get some value. And then 20 over 30 is 38. So 38, whatever that total is. Say some of the frequencies. Look at that. B more than a minute. So here's here's a minute 60 seconds. So more that's four. So four over whatever our total is. That's putting some of the frequencies. And then C says between 20, 20 and 59 cents inclusive. So they want you to add these two values up here right there. So that's going to be 57 over the total, whatever the total is. It's not that bad. 57 plus that, 61, 61 plus 17. So about 88. So I can put 88 on all these instead of this like total. And that's the idea. And then from here, we could move on. We could talk about how to how to graph an experimental probability distribution. And all, all that is, it's a graph that lets you know what's the odds of each thing, right? So all you do is go to your value here. Let's do it here, right? I'll put my online inside. Then over here, you put your, your marking. So zero, I've got all the way to 145. And let's say inside, went to 130, 113, so around there. And then on the line is only 32, so that's me like more down here. And there's your probability screen, right? Just by a quick look at like, okay, that's gonna happen way more often. So like down here, right? Some of two dice. Oh, seven's gonna happen the most. And again, this was a pro this was an experimental one, so it's not like nice and even. Uh, Twelve happened more than eleven in this case, right? Because it's based on an experiment, but they did, they did a probability distribution based on that. Now we can do one for theoretically. Theoretically, remember we talked about is based on this knowledge and logic and mathematics. So this problem, we'll do this problem right here. A card of a dozen eggs contains eight brown eggs, the rest are white. So here's my dozen eggs, my total is 12. I know eight of them are brown, and the rest are white. So four, I did the math. How many white eggs are in the card? Four, 12 minus eight is four. Find the probability that an egg selected at random is in brown. So you go, okay, one over total. Again, we didn't do any experiments, we just did the math on it. It's like, okay, there's 12 total. There's eight brown, so eight out of 12, or 66%. White, well, there's four of those, there's 12, so you get one third, 33%. And that's the idea of experimental, right? You do it based on theory, sorry, theoretical, do it based on theory. And likewise, we can do the same thing with our probability distribution, we can do the exact same idea. Get our, this is two dice, right, and you can graph it. Now notice that's nice and symmetric, it's based on mathematics, not an experiment. Okay, next step. Let's talk about expected value. Expected value is another that's a fancy way to say the mean or the average. Or just what do you expect to happen? So if I roll it down, what do you expect to happen? It's called the expected value. Now it's, here's the formula for it. I'm probably gonna give you one that says this. That's my fancy E that I stuck that drawing right there. There we go. Slightly better. And P. And that just says, same thing it says here, right? You get your number and you times it by the probability. That's how you find expected value. Now, number times probability, you notice there's an E here. Remember what that means? That means sum. We're going to add them all up. So let's look here. A gain show contestant has one, one spin of the wheel at the right. Find the expected value is winning. So let's say, so the idea here is, if you're going to spin this wheel, what's, what do you expect to get on average? On average, what do you expect to get if you spin this wheel? So the way we find it, it's very simple. We're going to find the sum of each value times this probability. So first value, right? Let's start with this, no prize. So that's zero, right? You don't get a win. That's 20% chance of that happening. Plus the next one, five grand, 30, 36% chance of that happening. Plus the next one, 10 grand, you have a 22% chance of that happening. Plus 15 grand and 14%. And then finally, 
25 grand, you have an 8% chance. And we're gonna multiply this all together using our calculator, and we'll get an answer up. We get $8,100. So, now you might wonder like, wait, how, how do you on average you get 8,000? I can't get 8,000 anywhere. Because again, it's on average. Most of the time, you're probably you're gonna get five grand. Sometimes you can get zero or two thousand, but on average, if you just average it all up, it'd be about eight thousand you'd get for each spin. Not bad. So this next one. So this one, the first question is, it's a random variable, right? So here's our variables, here's our probability. So I'll have to get any zero is point ten, I'll have to get any one to point three, and so on. First question is find k. Now if we talk about this a little bit. Remember your probabilities have to all add up to be 1. If you add all these up, it should equal 1. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Find our k. So we're going to add all these up. And set equal to 1. If we do the math, I think we get 0.15. So that's our k. Now the next question is, it says, what's the odds of getting greater than or equal to 3? Now, Key import, it says greater than or equal to 3, so I'm going to go 3 or 4. We're going to add those two up, so probability of 3 is 0.10. Probability of 4 is 0.15. We just figured that out, so we get 0.25. So we have that. And then finally, we want to know what's the expected value. So again, we talked about expected value. All you do here is you're going to multiply all these together and add them up. So my expected value is going to be 0 times 0.1. Plus 1 times 0.3, plus 2 times 0.45, plus 3 times 0.10, plus 4 times 0.15. We add them up, we get 2.1. So expect the value of this thing is 2.1. So on average, if you did whatever this was, you'd get about 2.1. So again, it's expected value. Just multiply your value times the probability of it and add them all up. If you want to expect the value of a single thing, you just look at the probability. If you want to put the value of a couple things, like what's odds of getting one or two, you just add them up. Um, this is the same idea. What's the difference here is that they don't give you the probability. Well, how do you do it? You do one over total. So if you add all this up, I think you get 5,132. If you add all these up. So the probability of this one would be whatever 5,000 is over 5,132, 100 over 5,132, and so on. And then you just do the exact same thing. We're going to skip that, the rest of that for now. Same thing here. Uh, let's go to this one real quick. Graph the theoretical probability distribution. So let's do that. We haven't done one of those in a while. Now there's actually two ways to graph it. You can do a chart or you can do a spike graph, what they call a spike graph. Let's do this real quick. So no prize, zero dollars. Let's be this way of prize money. And then let's have five dollars, ten dollars, and twenty bucks. And we're going to go, our max here will be 1 because it's all probability, so max you ever hit was 1. Ooh, let's do, uh, how am I going to do this? 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. There you go. Make it, it kind of works. Anyway, let's do, no prize is 84%. So far and away, no prize is the biggest. So let's do a spike graph. I know this. You go 0 0.84, 0 0.84 is around there. And you just go straight down. That's a, we call that a spike graph. And then five bucks, ten, so like right here. Ten, ten bucks, 0 0.05, so that's like less than, it's like half of that. And then 20 bucks is really small, so it's like a little dot right there. So you can see in this thing, far and away you get no money, no prizes on this one. And let the odds go worse and worse. So next question is find the expected value. Okay, so the expected value. We're just going to multiply our prize money by the percentage. So 0 gets to 0 0.84. 20 bucks gets to 0 0.01. $10 gets to 0 0.05. And 5 bucks gets to 0.10. Add this all up. This will be 2 plus uh, 0 0.5 plus 0.5. Just checking that's 0.2 actually, sorry. Add that up, you get 1.2. So expect the value of, of playing this raffle. Okay, the table shows probably a raffle, 100 tickets sold. So expect the value of playing this raffle, you get about $1.20.
And so what results you found in part B, what can you include about this raffle? Now let's see, tickets are sold for a dollar each. So tickets are sold for a dollar each. I expect to get a dollar twenty-five each, so it's a pretty good raffle. Like I would take that raffle. You you pay a dollar, you get about you're expected to get a dollar twenty. Now again, most of the time you're not gonna get a dollar, but odds are strong enough that you might get five or ten at some point and make it all worth it. So this is a good deal for a player. Bad deal for a dealer. Now there's actually a thing we call a, a fair game. And that is when that is when the expected value equals the cost. So this is not a fair game. It actually helps the, the player because they can expect to win more. But if you want to make this a fair game, so like it's fair but involved, you the whatever the cost is should be the expected value. So to make this fair, the cost should be about $1.20 to play. And that's the idea behind expected value.